Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be making an updated thumbnail tutorial. Now, today we will be focusing on how to use the new NPC mod, tips and tricks, and generally what you should be looking for. All right, to start off, you're gonna wanna go to gfxup.card.co and you're gonna wanna install new NPC. It's a better version of NPC mod for 1.8.9. For this, you will need Forge. For whatever reason, this does not work with Feather Client. I would also recommend getting our GFX back. We are going to be using it in this tutorial. All the other tools I will be using today are going to be in the description. Okay, so to start off, you're going to want to press E to go into your inventory, go into this second layer, and then go into custom NPCs tools. And here you are going to have these tools, which you are going to need. All of these are irrelevant for thumbnail making. Um, so we're just going to go with these. Before we start, I would recommend using a texture pack that is similar to the default Minecraft look. Usually it's supposed to be 16x and just generally normal looking. I'm personally using midnight 16x and i think it looks nice so without further ado let's start go to your mob planner right click on the ground wherever you want the player to be right click click poses and choose one of the poses we have here these are all poses you guys are gonna have these are pre-made by me and added into the mod automatically so i'm just gonna get running one okay so now that we have our npc we're gonna need to add skin and the cape to it and this is how you're gonna do it so first of all i'm gonna just go here click player and get my username for cape i'm gonna click select texture this is how it's gonna look like to you guys or a bit different and i'm just gonna get my lunar cape so double click here and select my lunar clip next up you might notice we have black lines here now how do we get rid of them well this actually happens because micro skins have two models alex and steve now my skin is supposed to be an alex model so how do we change this we're gonna right click again click edit entity and alex arms next up we're gonna want to rotate our skin so i want this to be the background so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna right click ai movement and change this to around 215 degrees and now we want to edit the movement maybe change the cape a bit maybe change the arm a bit so for that we're going to click advanced we're going to be here in puppet if it's not then you're going to might want to like change these a bit and click edit and here you have all of your controls so i'm going to click cape and just move this back a bit there we go next up i want to give it a sword so let's go back here get our diamond sword for example and give it there we go now that we've taken care of the character we're going to want to take screenshots now how do we do that first of all you want to make sure your FOV is between 30 to 50. So I'm going to go back a tiny bit, get myself a slab, and just stand on it. Usually you want your character to be on the right of the screen or on the left of the screen. That usually leaves you room for text and other stuff, which is really, really useful. Next up, you're going to want to click F1 wherever you're comfortable. So I think this is a good pose in a good place. I'm just going to click F2. Okay, so now I'm going to click F1 again. And this is a really, really important step that a lot of people forget about or simply don't know about. So we have added this new tool called npc deactivator so what it does if i right click this you see the npc vanishes and this gives us a plain background to work with i'm going to click f1 again f2 and we've got our screenshot if you want to use shaders i personally recommend complementary shaders i'm going to leave my settings in the description now to the editing okay so now that we have opened photoshop or p.net gimp photo p whatever you guys want to use we need to get our screenshots to actually get the screenshot you too. You're gonna want to right click on your Windows logo, search for percent app data percent, click enter, and this is gonna pop up. So you're gonna want to click Minecraft, scroll down for screenshots, and look for your screenshots, which will most likely be in the bottom. And if you have this small logo right here, you're gonna want to click all of them together, all the layers that have this, and right click and rasterize layers. There you go. Okay, now you're probably not gonna have this. I just took two screenshots, one with shaders, one without, just for the exact example of it so i'm just gonna make two groups for this so we can ignore this step so to start off we're gonna want to cut off our subject so a lot of people use the polyagonal lasso tool but i personally use the pen tool i think it's more accurate and has more features to toy around with so you're gonna select here 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 and here you can use old scroll wheel to zoom in and out make sure that when you're selecting your subject you're not going outside of the subject you can go a bit inside like i'm doing right here but not outside that is extremely important for you guys okay i'm about to finish here and i am done now once you do that you're gonna want to click selection go to your rectangular selection tool right click and layer via copy not cut copy once you do that you can delete the background layer and there we go this is basically our crop out you 
can see here and now we can apply effects on our character and our background separately all right guys so before we continue any further make sure to save your project you're gonna want to get your gfx back i'm using mine again as said in the beginning you can get it it's in the description double click it and it should open disable the first layer and we're gonna go to player styles now here we have our normals which are without shaders this is the vanilla look my personal favorite have bsl shaders and complementary shaders now i'm personally gonna use these because this is what we have here this is vanilla no shaders and to save these and actually apply them what we're gonna want to do is select the one you like so i'm gonna get this one click new style and save this as whatever you want now we're gonna go here double click the layer with our player on it click styles and choose it perfect i'm gonna do the same for the background sick okay so next up i'm gonna add text so go to your horizontal type tool click it and i'm personally using panton as my font it's personally one of my favorite fonts it's the same font little client uses for their stuff and it's generally just a very very nice font so i'm gonna call this tutorial there we go and to size it up and just change the location i'm gonna click Control t and then i can just do whatever i want with it basically i'm gonna put it behind a player i'm also gonna size up the player in the background and i'm gonna do that until you can see the player clips with the top and bottom all right this already looks pretty fabulous in my opinion but to make this actually better we're gonna add a few stuff just to show you guys what we can do i'm gonna go back to the gfx back and go to skies i'm gonna select sky I like all right i'm actually pretty happy with this one i'm gonna copy it and paste it here okay so to actually apply the sky we're gonna disable all other layers select the layer that we want to change the sky in click select color range click on sample colors sample colors and usually you're gonna want to go with the corner because that's where the sky are and just change this until its skies are fully selected and there we go this is basically a perfect selection we're gonna click here click delete and there we go we have our sky i'm also gonna give this style and we can re-enable our layers we're also gonna add some anime lines so to do that we're gonna go to anime lines here and i personally like these first ones here these are my favorites just put these on we make them a tiny bit bigger and give them a style as well and we are pretty much good to go now a lot of people usually like having a bit of a blur behind our character so i'm going to show you guys how to do that as well so just for the sake of it i'm going to drag our player over here and duplicate it to duplicate we're going to click ctrl j and rasterize right click and click rasterize layer style next up we're going to put it behind our original player go to filter blur gallery and path blur now you can just shake this drag it behind and as you can see this changes make sure center blur is disabled and you have this now you can change the settings however you like it's gonna change the speed to the max here and you can also change this here which i think around 15 percent looks very very nice now i'm gonna drag these back over here so you're gonna click this click filter blur gallery again click iris blur and we are going to select our subject aka our player it doesn't have to be perfect but i think that looks good and change the blur a tiny bit a bit lower maybe five there you go perfect do it for the sky as well here's another trick that i personally really really like using so make a new layer make sure your color is white go to your brush tool here are my settings just size 700 and hardness zero and just put a few dots then go here change your mode to overlay and you're good to go maybe size this up by using ctrl t and finally go to your adjustments tab Tab over here go to curves make an s curve trying to be like this Tiny bit like that, a bit less. After that, you can go to Vibrance, add 15 here, and 5 to Saturation. There we go. And there you go. This is your thumbnail. I think this looks pretty awesome. I really, really hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe and like. All the links are in the description. If you need any help, you can go to my Discord. It's in the description as well. And uh, yeah, so see you guys next time, and goodbye.